Now, looking at the market, not much movement on the bourse. What was performance like? I mean, essentially, we're seeing very little movement. Um, I think investors are just watching out for the for, for results. Anything that you know would 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 sort of prompt them to make make a decision whether to exit or, or enter into a counter, uh, and and we've been seeing that coming through uh, through the banks. And, and yesterday we had Centum and uh, Safaricom. You mentioned there at the end of trading. Looking at uh, Safaricom out with results of the market close. Now the company posted a 43.3% slide in pre-tax of profit to about 5.4 billion shillings. However, we had revenues up 5.3% to 49.6 billion shillings. It's really driven by growth in data. Results in line with what you had expected? Um. The, we, we were expecting a decline, but the decline was a lot more severe than um, our estimates. Um, that was essentially driven by costs, and, and you know, if you look at the top line you mentioned there, the, the revenues grew very strongly, uh, especially M-Pesa revenue, which grew uh, 50 percent. Then you had uh, you know, mobile and fixed data, which grew 36 percent, so that, that, was, that came in quite well. Um, year on year, in fact, you're seeing, you know, 200%, half on half, you're seeing half on, uh, growth of about 200 to 300% on both M-Pesa and Data, which, which is a very strong performance. So our main concern really came in on cost. Uh, they had a one-off cost on the uh, foreign exchange uh, loss, uh, and essentially that was um, a revaluation on their payables. Uh, the exchange rate weakened, and that meant that the payables that they, they had in their books sort of increased in value. So they had to write down that, um, and essentially that combined with a general increase in cost uh, came down to affect the bottom line. Like you're saying, cost affecting the company, really tough times ahead for the company going forward, given increased competition within the sector and a growing, uh, the slowing economy. Where to from here for Safaricom? Actually, I think the next six months are going to be very good for the company. Um, they, they might have front-loaded a lot of their capital expenditure uh, and, in essence, depreciation. Uh, they've increased the tariff, which means, uh, in essence, in terms of capacity, you know, that might free, free them up a little bit. Um, and, and, and they've also increased the, the tariffs, uh, which, which essentially means higher revenues. I think net-net even though we're going to see a reduction in the minutes of use of, over the coming six months, I think on overall it's going to be positive for the company. And, uh, you know, potentially they could actually match last year's performance. Looking at the stock, it's been a firm favorite amongst uh, uh, foreign investors, but pretty stuck between that uh, three shilling mark. What are your expectations for the share to trade at uh, today? What are you seeing the share doing today? I think the 47.4% decline in net profits is definitely going to spook investors. And we are, we are probably going to see some selling. Um, I, I think investors, uh, you know, also if you look at the general market, it's related downwards. So that, that performance is not going to inspire uh, un unless you have very courageous investors. I think we're going to see the counter ending down today. We had uh, TransCentury coming out with a cautionary announcement. That stock ended uh, flat at uh, 30 shillings. The company said that it would invest directly or indirectly in the ordinary capital of uh, Civicom Limited. Is that, is that a good move for the company in your view? Um, I, I need to look into more detail that what, what that company specifically does. Uh, but the specialized uh, the engineering division of, of Transcentury is, is actually a very a potentially very important one for the group. Um, but I think investors at the moment uh, are, are just concerned uh, as to the overall performance of the group. Um, they have a $75 million loan, uh, which is sort of listed overseas, a convertible one. And you know that could potentially come in as 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 a as a as a, as a loss uh, towards the end of the year, depending on how the exchange rate performs. Um, so investors are a little bit cautious at this time, but but the overall strategy for for the company looks good in the medium term. Now, if we look at the two indices that were launched on a Tuesday, the FTSE the the FTSE NEC Kenya 25 index and the Kenya 15 index, what has the uptake been like over the past few days? Well, well essentially it's, it's, it's really an index sort of to benchmark. Um, I think it would probably be important when you're, for foreign investors especially when, when they're trying to benchmark their portfolios. 
uh, uh, in the longer term, you might have some products designed around those indices, um, uh, and that 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 might potentially make the entry into the Kenyan market maybe indirectly, maybe through the over-the-counter uh, uh, products and so forth uh, more possible. Mm -hmm. So I think this is probably a first step in terms of uh, sort of connecting Kenyan stock market to sort of the global market. But essentially, we're probably going to see more products designed around this uh, to, to really be able to see them making an impact.